better late than never and we are here for our reacts after we lost 2-1 to Newcastle but we've got a bit other bits and pieces uh, on this one as well with obviously Sonny returning back to Korea for the international break and let's get straight into it guys uh, first up here you go Lucas Bergvall doing the Sonny celebration in training and he's a, he's already getting the memo of course so close just need to connect those fingers and then he's done it <laughs> very close <laughs> Uh, this one, I don't know if you ever saw it, but Lee scored a, um, scored a last minute winner for Espanyol in the 96th minute. Really nice touch, actually, and, and banged it in the back of the net. And you don't even need to listen to it, but if you read there, it says uh, he was speaking in uh, Spanish, obviously. And he said, I had a year that honestly wasn't great for me footballistically. I don't even know if that's a word. I just want to thank my family, my girlfriend, whoever supported me, the coaching staff for giving me the chance to come here and prove myself and my teammates. And just look how emotional he was. Basically yeah. crying, wasn't he? Big moment for him. You got to remember, last season was, from his point of view, uh, probably a bit of a disaster. You know, mm. because he's coming in as a bit of a, I don't know about a wonder kid, but a kid with high potential, playing for um, was it Boca we signed him from? Mm. Um, scoring, you know, quite regularly in the Argentinian league. Scored about twelve or thirteen. Exactly, goals, yeah. he scored twelve goals, and you know, he's at nineteen. That's no mean feat, as much as you know, we compare it to European leagues and whatever. And so he's probably thinking. You know, I'm onto a really good thing. I've got to move to Europe. Like, things are really happening for me. And then as soon as, as soon as he gets to Tottenham, it's like the brakes have been put on. You know, Belly gets a game for six months, gets a few minutes here and there, gets injuries. I did get a goal against Brighton, but, you know, um, it, it probably, you, he would have hoped to have played a bit more in those first six months. Goes on loan to today. He's probably thinking, okay, another chance for me to show what I can do at a top European league in La Liga. Barely gets a minute there. And he's thinking he's probably thinking at this point, what the hell's going on? What and he hasn't even done that much wrong like yeah. himself. Like when he got opportunities at Tottenham, he did all right. Never really got the opportunities. I like what he's about. Yeah, never really got the opportunities when he was at Sevilla. So he probably feels like beyond his control, things have gone very wrong in in you know in the year after moving. So I I hear that emo I feel that emotion that he's feeling. I can see it. A bit a little part of me does feel like it is only one goal. Like, you know, <laughs> hopefully, like, hopefully he has a lot more than that. And like it's it, like scoring, I know it's your first goal, it's the last minute win. It's an emotional thing. Early on as well. And it's early on. But, you know, one goal shouldn't get you be crying. But I understand. He's clearly a very yeah. emotional guy. He's, an, right? he was clear, look, he's clearly you know, a very passionate guy. You saw that on the pitch for Tottenham, how he plays. He's always putting 100% in some of those cameos. Some of them he came on, you know, we're down to 10 men and he's fighting for the team. You saw that. He's a proper but, fighter. Yeah, right? he is. So I understand his passion. I feel it. And um, hopefully he can use that to, uh, you know, hopefully have a good loan spell Espanyol. I always feel like he gets like well over the top criticism by uh by some of the Spurs fan base like saying he's rubbish, he's never gonna make it. There's not it. much to criticize, we haven't it's seen enough of him. I mean everything I've seen from him I like. I like mm. his tenacity. I like his application on the pitch. I like his work rate. He scored a goal. And also, he seems like big and physical and a bit mobile, like fairly quick off his feet. And that's yeah. a good combination. Abs absolutely. So I think um I think he's gonna be good for us. I really believe it. And also you saw the goal? Yeah, so we are, we've got it. We've got okay. it a bit later in the, in the show, um, a bit further up on the likes. But yeah, just just to see that emotion coming out of him is just great to see. And apparently, he's already played more minutes for Espanyol after three games than he did for Sevilla in his whole so six months. It's probably a lot of frustration coming out of you mm -hmm. know coming out of him as well in terms of like it's a bit of a relief that he's yeah. got off the mark early on. Um, and like it's kind of like already this loan spell has gone better than the last one already. So I'm happy for the lad. I'm yeah. happy for the lad. Uh, next one from Finn <laughs> saying, Ange is definitely going to be bored by the end of the season. Oh. <laughs> well, look, he's only just joined the uh, Spurs crew. So, yeah, no surprise. Happens to the best of us. Exactly. <laughs> See what's coming. Uh, next one is most touches in the opponent box by a team in the game in a game in the Premier League this season. 60 was the most Spurs against Leicester. And we're also fifth as well against Newcastle, 49. I don't like stat news using the word Spursy. Um, lay off that word, thank you. We can use it, but it's not really. Uh, look, it's a bit Spursy, but I don't care. I don't. You're supposed to be a neutral stat Twitter account. Don't be using the word Spursy. But pretty spot on though. It is a bit Spursy. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it's not wrong. But look, it's prom it's promising that we. I'd rather us having lost or not won those games, I'd rather be on the top of those stats than watching us having lost and, you know, not played well or, or be in the bottom of those stats. The problem is, like, weren't we at the top of all these stats last season as well? No, not top. We were near the top, but we weren't top. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, it's, but, but, it, but for me, as long as we're performing well in these stats, I think in the long term, um, it should 
bear, um, hold us in good stead, in my I opinion. I kind of feel like that as well, but I'm just not sure if our front line is good enough. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, next up, this is from SM. I think he's done Kulisevsky dirty here. It says, shit, no, he's better in the midfield. Shit, no, he's better on the wing. Shit, and it's just a revolving cycle with Kulisevsky. Nah. But I think maybe it has been true over the last couple of seasons. But I think this season, he's been pretty good every game. He's had a good... I thought he had a good game against Newcastle. I think mm. he's been good whenever he's been called one out a great preseason. Um, I don't think he's actually played in midfield like that consistently that much before this season. Um, yes, he's had a couple of games last season, but usually filling in when Manners was injured or, or other players. So I think this is very unfair on Decky, and I don't know why he's calling him out after the Newcastle game where he had a pretty good game. So yes, he had a couple of moments like that pass where he should have found Brennan, blah, 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 blah. But every, in every game, everyone's going to have a couple of moments like that. Like I thought in general, he's really good. Mm. Tottenham Maskey says, Grandad, why haven't Tottenham won at St. James's Park since Nuno was in charge 54 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> and what a game. And then Dombele scored. So basically, we need Nuno and Dombele back to win at St. James's that's, Park. That's, that was that's exactly, exactly what they're saying. I told you we should have kept that's Dombele. The perfect double duo. Just get, get, get Tongi back for one game and one then game. they can go back. And get Nuno back for one game. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Get Nuno back for one game uh, on a loan. <laughs> you, why can't, if you can loan players, why can't you loan a manager for a game? Why not? Make it a rule. <laughs> There's a couple of these graphs to go on Spurs watch uh, an ongoing problem since last season for Tottenham low shot conversion inside the box and low shot protection inside the box and this is from data analytic EPL and you can see Spurs right here down at the lowest uh, shot conversion inside the penalty area is that this season or is that what that is I believe it's this. It's September. as of September. I believe it's this season. Must yeah. be this season. Yeah. yeah, but look, Arsenal are very close. Yeah, you wouldn't say they're a bad team. They haven't been good this season so far. Arsenal, they haven't been really. the best. Um, deserved the win against probably Wolves. I think. I think a big problem with Arsenal is actually their conversion rate because, like, they're great in defence, and because they're they're but great in defence, it gets mar it gets masked a little. But it bit. says here they've got low. Uh, Box uh, shot protection, which is interesting. Well, you, to be fair, you look at the Villa game. Villa definitely should have got at least mm. a couple of goals. To be fair, Wolves should have got a, a goal at least in that game, shouldn't yeah. they? They had chances. Yeah. Uh, Brighton, um, up until the red card, didn't have many. But then, um, yeah, they, they obviously deservedly scored. So it's interesting to see Arsenal that low. But yeah, for us, I think this has been a, uh, the story of um, us under Ange yeah. in terms of getting near the box, brilliant build-up but not being able to put away our chances or enough of them anyway. And when we don't, um, we always allow the opposition, you know, at least one or two good chances a game. Last season, probably sometimes more, but this season, at least one or two. Um, so it's interesting. So it's not, it doesn't surprise me. It's something we're going to have to improve on. Um, but I think we have the players to improve on it, especially the conversion rate. I think that's the, I reckon that if, when Ange looked at this graph, he wants to see the. He's more focused on the conversion rate in the box, improving rather than the one outside. And we need to see Dom Solanke making a real contribution to that because that's why he's been brought in. Of course. Next up is another graph for you, and this is first in press intensity, first in possession percentage. If we can't translate these incredible passing and possession numbers into goals, this system will always look incomplete and toothless. Any game with these numbers and good XG conversion rates wins games and trophies, and that's hundred percent spot on, isn't it? And you look at the Newcastle game, how many times? There was a few times we did some brilliant pressing, won the ball inside Newcastle's half. It was constant throughout the game. Yeah, opportunities to um, open Newcastle up, and we just failed to do so, failed to really put away the chances we created. We were, a few of the players out there were guilty of that. But one thing you can't fault them is the uh, work they put in, the pressing they had on that Newcastle team. I, you know, I don't think as many teams as us will get as much joy in pressing Newcastle as we did. And it was that was a very impressive... Um, display on, on, on that front. Unfortunately, the chances weren't being put away and then we got punished. But I think if we can make better use of those moments where we are winning the ball in the opposition's defensive third and we're attacking them, then uh, it'll come for us. But it's all about, the question is, do we have the quality in the front line to do it? You know, Personnel-wise, we've got good players. It's all about, you know, there's just a few questions. Can Odebert, you know, fulfill his potential? Is Son over the hill, or is he still there? Solanke, still how's there. it? How's he going to translate to the uh, Tottenham after scoring so many goals for Bournemouth? Brennan, can he improve on those fifteen goals and assists last season? Timo, is he ever going to be um, a bit better in front of goal? Probably so I not. think there's question marks about them, but you know you can go either way. You can look at it a positive way, you can look at it a negative way, but 
I do think in terms of this graph, that's very positive. And it also implies if you do if, if you do put better quality in that front line, it's guaranteed to succeed. Yeah. I just look at the first 10 games last season. How many goals did we score in those first 10 games, winning the ball high up the pitch and showing real quality and showing a roof for set? The truth is, in those first 10 games, everyone marvels about them. But how many times did we score more than two goals? Only the Burnley game, I think. Yeah, it was only the Burnley game. So, but... so as much as we played great and we were in control of games, we still only scored more than two once. And that is, uh, for, for Angeball, th- you know, we need to be doing that a lot more. Yeah, but we thought it was like the first 10 games and there's a sign of things to come and we Correct. were only going to get better. And, and obviously then... we didn't. But what I'm trying to say is that in those first 10 games, we were topping all, all these metrics after yeah. the first 10 games. We were winning the ball high up the pitch. We were scoring and converting from those chances that we were winning the ball. Not all of them, obviously, but a lot of them. And uh, since then, we haven't been a- we've, we've just lost that cutting edge, haven't we? We haven't been able to convert these chances. Correct, but I don't think it means that we don't have the players to do it. I really believe we do. We just, they just I think now Solanke's in. And now Solanke's and look, and in. And you look at this graph, you know, Brighton are there. See, I know Southampton are there, but Man, Man City are <laughs> there as well. has got one goal this season. Man City are there. Um, you know, they're near the top. So look at Arsenal all the way down there. They're there. Yeah, they... But we know Arsenal, on, you know, since last season, they've been doing things in a bit of more of a pragmatic way, haven't they? So not that much of a surprise, but they are, a bit, you know, doing things in a different way. But mm. I think if we continue on that path, just make sure that we take advantage of those pressing moments, it will stand us in good stead. Yeah, but he's right in what he's saying. It's like, if you have all these numbers and everything, it will just always look incomplete and toothless. And it does look like that a bit at times. What do you mean? If we if we're not winning, you mean? If we're not converting our chances, yeah, like, correct. Like we have been, correct. You know? Yeah, and that that comes to the quality of the players in the front line. Yeah. You look at Liverpool, and they have those moments where they're pressing high, and they and and they win the ball. They make sure they make some a good chance out of it. Sometimes we don't do that, and that's a problem. Liverpool are just looking a bit perfect at the moment. It's a bit <laughs> like literally their defense is absolutely spot on. Haven't conceded a goal this season, and their attack looks absolutely dynamite. Uh, this is the next graph from EPL analyst saying average ball control above 75% of the pitch for each team in the English Premier League, updated after game week three, and Tottenham are well in front of everyone. So, what is that? Five percent of the time we've got 75% of the possession or more. Is that what it means? Yeah, it's pretty. I mean, I'll, I don't think necessarily the amount of possession matters, in my opinion, but obviously you want to have more possession, um, uh, like if you want to control the game. Um, Possession, I think back in the day, you know, uh, maybe 10, 15 years ago, it was all about, you know, possessions, nine tenths of the law, all that kind of stuff, and you want high, high, high uh, elements of possession. I feel like in this day and age, teams are a lot smarter and teams are more willing to give you possession to play their game. Um, but look, you, it's a weird one. You see if the top five are like some of the best and the worst teams. So I think that proves the point. But, but I also, do think you want high possession, but I wouldn't say just because you have high possession, that's necessarily a I proof. I would say like the only top, top team over the past five or six years that have willingly given away possession is Arsenal. I feel like Liverpool and Man City have always looked to dominate massively. I think most, no, I think most teams do. Um, and I think if you're having... Under 50, 50 percent possession, that's a problem. What, what, all I'll just say is, I don't think just because the more I'm not saying I'm just my point. My point is, I don't necessarily think it's the more possession the better. You know, um, obviously you can get 100 percent. That's brilliant, but um, I don't necessarily think like just because well, I see numbers of 75 percent that it's in itself means something like you're you're you have you're on definitely on the right it's path. also it's also a case to say that you know a lot of teams are just letting us have possession at the moment as particularly and that definitely was the case a lot last season towards the second half of last season teams yeah. were letting us have All possession that, that, because they knew we couldn't do anything with it. well that newcastle game we must have over 75 percent possession yeah. when we lost four nil yeah arsenal we probably had a lot of possession as well that, that's my point so it's all about what you do with the possession, but I do think I'd rather have the possession than not have it. But I, I just what I'm saying that stat in isolation doesn't tell me like just because we've got 75 percent possession more than anyone else necessarily means that means it's what we're doing is working. If you know what I mean, I'm not I'm not sitting here saying it's not working. I'm just saying that in itself doesn't tell me it is. Yeah, and like back in the in the Mourinho and, and um, Conte days, we were saying, oh, just what would you do for a bit of possession right now? But, but my point's proven there. Ipswich and Samson are third and fourth there. Yeah. And they, because they have a lot of possession, but it doesn't mean that what they're doing is working. Yeah. Uh, next up, Stat News. Fun fact, Newcastle versus Tottenham is the most played fixture in the Premier League history, never to finish nil-nil. That's 59 games on the trot. Oh, I'll do for a nil-nil at St. James's Park. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, and this is the clip of Belize's goal. Is it? I thought it was. Oh, no, 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 that was against Brighton. Peter, no, that was a, in the youth game. I don't know. It's the only race. Well, really apparently, we don't have it's the, a Belize the, goal. It's a Belize goal. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but if you, I don't know if you, so if you don't have it, it's a really nice goal. He takes a really sharp touch inside the box away from the defender, and he has a split second to fire it into the roof of the net. Um, and it's a really quick thinking, and it's a really great finish. And the great bit of the goal, if you watch it, is that little touch he takes just before his goal, where he just steps in front of the defender, um, just sets himself to shoot, and it's a really good piece of play. Yeah, go check it out. It's all over social media. This next one is from a Man City fan saying, Premier League last five seasons, net spend ranked from 1 to 20 of Tottenham a third in net spend now um, mm. over the whole Premier League just behind crazy Chelsea and Manchester United who have also you know just pissed loads of money away so out of those two teams Spurs have actually spent the most in terms mm. of net spend um, including and selling Harry Kane for 100 million I actually think that's more of a I know we have spent a lot of money I'm not saying we haven't but I actually think that graph is more of an indication of how bad we are at selling than how much we spent because um, I know we sold Kane for 100, but you look at the how bad we are at like, getting the players out the door. Mm. A lot of the time, we struggle to get good fees for the players we don't want. And I think that's why, in terms of the net, you know, we if you look at each summer, apart from the Kane deal, you know, and maybe look, this summer we got, I guess we got a few, you know, for Emerson over 10 million, Hoybier 15 million. We spent about 20 million or something in the end this summer. But... Overall, if you look at the previous seasons, we're letting a lot of good players yeah, go for free but... with loan deals. We're, get, we're not getting fees for any of our players. Yeah, but maybe in the past, if, if that wasn't the case, we wouldn't be spending the money. Now we are spending the money with third in terms of net spend over the last five years ahead of teams like Man City, ahead of teams like Arsenal, who everyone's saying is spending loads, ahead of teams like Newcastle uh, and Aston Villa, who are spending quite a bit of money at the moment. So... Um, Daniel Levy said, you know, once we get the gate, the stadium will be a game changer in terms of how much we spend. Are we seeing that now? I mean, proof's in the pudding. We there, There's money there. Third in, third net spend over the last five years. I don't think we can really complain about the amount spent. You can maybe complain how, you spend how we spend it, when we spend it, on like what kind of player and sometimes timing and all that kind of stuff. Um, nothing can be perfect, but the money's being spent and... Um, yeah, I don't. I don't really have a, a, a problem at the moment with how much we're spending. To be honest, mm. it's more about how uh, we spend it. Yeah, and it's all about looking at the team and saying, have we? Um, we are filled, doing that. Have we filled ever all the problems? When there's still more problems to fill, you're never going to be completely satisfied. Yeah, but are you're you? not going to fill every problem in the like. Of course, was such a big job at Spurs. When I'm Angela not saying I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying it's you, when there's always problems you're going to point out. In you're never going to be completely satisfied until you see that hole being plugged yeah and uh, that's the reality but i'm i don't have i'm I, look i don't know if you if you've been watching this channel for uh, the last past like you know few years i don't think i've been that harsh on the board in the last few years in terms of the money they spent mm. so i i don't have a big problem with that but there is a narrative that spurs don't spend money still there is a narrative yeah and because we don't win anything. So there's a perception that we still cheapskate everything because we well, don't win. Well, we, we kind of do because we still haven't, you know, there are teams below us that have spent a lot more than us on a single player, isn't there? Like mm. Arsenal spent 100 million on Declan Rice. I think Isaac was bought for how much? But you look at Man, Man City, for example, they're, you know, apart, I know they sound greedy for 100 million, but they actually don't splash out big money that often anymore. They're, 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 they're in profit. Yeah, because it's, uh, this is my point. It's because of the players they sell. Look at look at the academy players they sell. Look at players like the Lap they sold for yeah. twenty million. Look at uh, Palmer, forty million, forty five million. That's my point. This when I look at my our spending, it's more of an indication of how bad we are at selling than actually mm. how much we spend. I think Arsenal fans will probably agree with that in terms of their own players. They they're not very good selling club either. No, they're not. And look at where they're. But at. they're even them. Like you know, they just got the, how how much for Smith throw thirty five million. Yeah. Willock, they probably, you know, they got what, 20 million for him or something. Yeah, so 25 recently. million for Nketiah, wasn't Nketiah, it? Nketiah, so they've been getting a bit better yeah. in the last year. Uh, next up, uh, Mickey van der Ven has withdrawn from the Dutch national squad, which we covered in the Tottenham updates. Go check that one out. Uh, Sonny arriving back at Incheon Airport. It seems like just yesterday that we were doing that walk. I know. Not with, not with that many people. Uh, not with this team. <laughs> He's by himself this time. Yeah. Uh, so could have stopped, but didn't. But he did. He did. He did stop. Yeah, he got loads of uh, gifts as well. Oh, beautiful! Was, Tottenham didn't allow him to pick up all the gifts, but now he's on his own. He can do what exactly. he wants. He does. He's in control of it. Lovely sweater. Big, big fan. 
this meme has done Emerson dirty. And Milan, uh, Milan fans have been uh, not happy with Emerson Royale, to say the least. <laughs> and uh, you have the clip of him misplacing that pass. It's no, the funniest clip I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> um, it says, four McNugget Happy Mill costs five dollars 39 cents can't score a goal can't play in defense but makes people happy <laughs> <laughs> emerson royale cost 15 million uh, euros can't score a goal can't play defense but makes people sad <laughs> oh the pain is real the pain is real there, there was just i have to see, see this clip if you haven't seen it is uh, this clip of emerson just um it was the title of the clip was emerson when he's got no pressure on him in defense and he's got the ball and he's literally got no one no one's pressing him or anything he's got an unforced error and he just passes it across the back line and goes straight to the opposition attacker and all of a sudden they're on the attack it's one mm. of the funny i was like i've seen that before many times and uh yeah milan don't know what they're in for i think they do now yeah apparently <laughs> it looks, looks like, like they do um clara says he's so cute i'm crying this is sonny training with the national team i'm holding uh, back the tears it's I'm good right great now. to see his uh, smile on the face but it is, it is great of course <laughs> looks happy to be home uh, this is him arriving saying thank you to his fans um, Love it. what does the... sticking his tongue out is he yeah <laughs> look at son Hyun min's expression when he receives a letter oh he's receiving a gift there oh lovely beautiful uh this is sonny Again, arriving or leaving, arriving. It looks like arriving. So I guess I had a little time believing that Son Heung Min's airport routine was this cute. It's pretty cute. The cutest airport routine <laughs> there is. Uh, here's more of Sonny training. Open Look training. at Son Heung Min so brightly. He's so pretty. <laughs> is that Yam in Hook in the background? I see. Uh, no, it's not him. It's not him. No. Oh, this is a sad one actually. Um, I don't know if any of you guys are regular at the Bricklayers Arms or at Tottenham, but I've been, um, you know, I remember seeing this guy since I was a young kid, to be honest, with uh, 16, 17 years old going to the Bricklayers Arms. This guy has been working there um, for God knows how long. I think it says it here. Uh, it says, we are very sad to announce the sudden death of Gary Brooks, who passed away on Saturday, 31st of August, age 70. Gary was a lifelong Tottenham fan who lived in Tottenham his entire life. Gary has been employed in the Bricklayers Arms, a pub opposite the stadium for almost 30 years, providing a service for the fans like no other, still working on match days at the age of 70. We are reaching out to all Tottenham fans to stand up and applaud Gary on the 70th minute at the next home fixture against Arsenal. Please share this post and let's all pull together together and show our love and appreciation for gary who was one of our own come on you spurs and yeah if you could all just share that Hashtag message around clap for gary yeah exactly so yeah everyone just share that message around I, I just remember seeing this guy pretty much my whole tottenham going live as far so. as you remember how much you drink but <laughs> <laughs> before the um, game but uh no uh, obviously fans are like the lifeblood of the club and uh, for someone who's been supporting the club for so long and he's probably um a, a fixture of a lot of tottenham fans That's what time, I'm saying, yeah. uh, you know when they go on match days because a lot of i know a lot of fans go to the bricklayers and they may obviously it's like a routine for a lot of fans to go there so i'm sure gary was uh, a big part of a lot of uh, fans tottenham experience Absolutely. so uh rest in peace gary and yeah clap hashtag clap for gary on the I, used, I, I used to see him literally every other week of my life <laughs> you see him more than some of your family yeah, you know what sometimes, I mean? it's yeah. mad part um, of the Tottenham family yeah uh, Lily White Rose saying four minutes so Jamie Donnelly basically was on the bench against Arsenal under 21s um, in the EFL Cup or one of these uh, cups and uh, he comes on and within four minutes he got a booking uh, so uh, not Jamie you, you can take the man out of Tottenham exactly. but you can't take the Tottenham out of the man getting stuck in let him know you're there <laughs> that's what I like to see um this one is sonny with an interview out in korea this week saying yeah it's the same and look just ages like a fine wine doesn't he sonny yeah it hasn't changed look at that can't believe he's 32 madness it looks... just a bit more hair yeah that's, that's it. it that's it that's the only difference <laughs> Um, and then this is the last one of him leaving the airport in Korea saying uh, goodbye to his adoring fans. He's or the entry work to video. do. Yeah. Let's hope work they don't do. overwork him. That's all I'm saying. Let's hope so. But yeah, that is the way everyone, the internet did react, not just to the game, but to um, everything around the internet over the last 48 hours. But thank you everyone for joining us today. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on you Spurs. Spurs.